Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a Thursday night. We are coming to you live on Channel One Dialog TV, live on our PodHub platform on YouTube. This is Sit Back with Shaq and Anu, as always, bringing some fantastic guests on the show, and we've had. A share of great guests for this week. Absolutely, but Shaq, what are you going to do? You make a dunia gila, man. Man, gila, man, gila. Oh my god! I'll tell you the actual story, yeah, right? right? Mm-hmm. We had a. F- I can't reveal the name of the guest, yes, yes, of course right? Not. Um, because uh, <coughs> very, very, very popular individual yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. in the current context of things. Absolutely. Uh, he's he was confirmed to actually be on the show yesterday. Um, tried to get in touch with him on Monday. Tried to get in touch with him on Tuesday. He didn't pick up the phone, so we <laughs> thought that because there were certain things that was going on in safe the country s- at the moment. Safe to say that he disappeared without a trace. He did, at least digitally. At least, <laughs> but then he did actually get in touch with us uh, on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday morning, yesterday morning. He had suddenly taken off to India, right, uh, for certain things, and he uh, apologizes, and of course that there was network issues. Um, hopefully, if we don't get him on the show sometime next week, we'll reveal who it is. Absolutely, but uh, fortunately, you got to enjoy, uh, you know, once again enjoy that uh, very candid, very funny, very informative interview with uh, none other other than the maestro Channa Vijayavadana. So you know that was fun. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Today's going to be a lot of fun. We got Hardy in the studio. Hardy Chabaldin. Hardy, thank you so much for coming in. Absolutely, pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> thank you very much for having me. <laughs> and uh, we have lots to talk about as far as the country, as far as the gaming industry is concerned. How is that linked to tourism? How will it benefit Sri Lanka? Uh, as far as the tourism industry is concerned, all that are more coming up on the show tonight. That's right. Uh, but today is no different from all our usual shows. So therefore, we do have a poll that is very, very relevant to today's interview. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into that right after this. Welcome to the universe of the Raz, where you explore and discover whatever you want, whatever you need. All you can imagine is on your feet. When miles are abridged, happiness is unlocked. Discover your Dara. And we are back. Uh, so today's poll very interestingly, is this. Here we are. Does Sri Lanka have the potential to attract the real high rollers? Yes or no answers only. WhatsApp your answers to our hotline number 077-669-1590. And uh, ideal time for, you know, Hardy to pose that question to Hardy as well, you know. Actually, you know what, we will, we, 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 should, we shouldn't sort of uh, divulge the answer. Too soon. Uh, too soon. <laughs> Maybe just before we actually do give the answer, we'll uh, pose the question to Hardy. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Uh, if uh, Sri Lanka does have the potential to attract uh, real high rollers. Hardy, let's talk about the gaming industry in Sri Lanka right now, right? I mean, it's been around for a while. It's been, uh, it's like the known secret, so to say. What is the phobia that, you know, the governments had with the gaming industry and the casinos that are open in the country? I think uh, it's a lot to do with um, the sort of culture that we are in um, and also the fact that uh, people tend to think it's a pariah of the world right um, and an absolute no-no so that is the mindset that people have all been brought up under so every politician uh, when when it comes to decision making on gaming have been reluctant to push ahead right Uh, so that's been very very clear but in fact um, gaming is seen as entertainment Um, you know you have all the sort of safeguards with promiscuous gaming what not on how you know, with everything, there'll be addictions. Right, right of course. Right? So, but what, what gets highlighted here is the addictive gambling personality. But now, if you take the Indian clientele or the Chinese, yeah. Yeah. they would travel with their families yeah. and they have an entertainment budget Absolutely. and allowance and they don't spend more than that. Yeah. So, that is what they see it as. So, it's always a case of how things have evolved. Um, it has gone from CD places to being one of the most investable uh, spaces uh, in commerce. So we've stayed on um, and I think to answer your question it's a lot to do with the culture and the mindset and the thinking around it. 
Now, obviously, um, like you said, you've stayed on, you've pushed forward uh, and trying to make this work in the country. What have you, I mean, okay, we are obviously having you on the show because of the Gazette issuance that yeah. obviously took place, which is good news, honestly, when you take a look yeah. at it, because it certainly will push uh, the tourism industry. We'll touch on that. But what were the pushbacks when you initially started to make sure that, you know, to make everyone understand that there is a, you know, a link to tourism with this? So I think if we, my, my involvement in the gaming side stems back to when Packer was coming to Sri Lanka. Yeah, right. Um, and so my background is structuring transactions. So raising equity, debt finance, and making something a reality. So, uh, but first of all, to operate in the space, I had to understand how gaming actually worked. So I've been an avid student on the subject over the last decade. Right. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Right. Um, so what we found was um, uh, people were very reluctant, politicians especially, reluctant to move what is required as an enabler in terms right. of government. Right? So if they have to bring an acting to parliament, it's a big hoo-ha. Right. Yeah. right. Okay, how much opposition is it going to get? Okay. When is the next election? So these are the things, understandably, that's in the back of the mind of a politician. Right. And so these have been, um, you know, stumbling blocks throughout. Right. And suddenly, okay, they understood that actually this could be beneficial um, in terms of quantum leaping in tourism and on, on our economy. So in 2010, the act came into play. Right. Um, a very thin two to three page act. Yeah. And now it has taken, you know, we are in 22, 12 years for a piece of regulation to be attached to that act. For yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> I mean, all this time there was no proper regulation, was there? No, no. So, yeah. so what this does also is from the perspective of governing, you have regulations in order to regulate the existing operators, which is a start. Right. right. But um, I think uh, the reluctances at each stages has been very politically driven on the back of opposition for for casinos and gaming. Absolutely. It's funny you can actually <coughs> find these politicians in the casinos. Absolutely, and the thing is this, right? So I like when you say culture, we are talking very much about religion. Yeah. Or you know, the, all the mainstream religions in Sri Lanka kind of advocate, you know, al drinking, smoking, gambling, yeah. <laughs> and womanizing. That comes of little, uh, fourth in right. line. But these three things are. Like, you know, for instance, alcohol and cigarettes probably contribute the biggest kind of income, you know, internally. Right. Gaming industry, I, we've seen it in, in Vegas, in Macau, in Singapore, is big, big business and a reason for people to visit these countries, yeah. especially from countries that have no gaming background, like India. It's very difficult, right? You've got need to go to Goa or come to Sri Lanka or, you know, go to these other places. So, I, I find that, you know, if... Cigarettes and alcohol are thriving because we, it keeps going up, consumption keeps going up. What's the problem? Yeah, well, there, are, there are various ways to look at it. Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, really all of this, um, just because there's a piece of regulation there, yeah. uh, it doesn't mean that tourism is going to thrive. Right, right. true, true. Right. It's just not going to happen right. that way. <clears throat> um, I think we have to really understand what the bottlenecks are yeah. along the way and address those. So now if you take Macau, yeah. uh, in its peak in 2014, yeah. it had 45 million tourists. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> wow. 45 million yeah. tourists, right? So, I mean, the way to, way to really go about it is to understand what the bottlenecks are and get to the bottom of each one. Yeah. And we must have a goal. Okay. We want to get to five million tourists. Yeah, yeah. Right. Get how do we? <laughs> how do we get there? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So we're an island nation. First of all, let's start from our airport. Yeah. So our airport in Colombo can is is built to handle six million passengers. Absolutely. Yeah. At the peak when we did two point three million tourists yeah. uh, in two thousand and eighteen, yeah. we handled ten million passengers in that airport. Yeah. Right. So. How are we, and with that 10 million passengers, only 22% translated into tourists. Right. So, so most of it are, are locals traveling or oh, transit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So in order for us to get to 5 million, 
our mix must shift up to 25 percent. Right. We must have the ability to handle at least 20 million passengers. Absolutely. Right. So, isn't, uh, isn't that in the third phase of the development? Isn't that the plan? So, at the moment, uh, so we had to start from there. Yeah, yeah. So, the airport, we must have the handling capacity. Um, and the expansion that was going on now, which has again been a very delayed project, yes, yes. is now again come to a stall. Because of our default, the Japanese loan is now not in place right. until we restructure. Right. 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 So, so, the airport becomes critical. And then it's a case of, okay, how do we encourage existing uh, players, airlines that are coming to Sri Lanka, how can we get them to increase their frequency of flights? Yeah. That's one. Then we need to look at new entrants. How do we encourage new entrants to come yeah. in? Yeah. Right? So when you see the bottlenecks around all of that, you need to identify what the issues are. So typically in a country like Malaysia that has 34 million tourists that comes a year, yeah. Singapore has 17, sorry, Thailand has 34, yeah. Malaysia has about 25. Right. right. So when you look at it, you see that budget carriers Typically, to have volume, yeah, yeah. you need budget carriers. So, we are talking three and a half, four hour distances yeah. from Sri Lanka. And actually, the real draw for Sri Lanka is where we are geographically located. We have within four and a half hour flying distance, we have a significant part of India yeah. and yeah. a significant part of China. Yeah. And so, Southeast Asia. Right, Southeast Asia. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so, how do we attract them? Right. We only have 7% budget carriers coming in to Katanayaka or Bandar yeah. Nayaka. Why? So then you start to look at, okay, you ask the question, you get the answer. And what it is, is yeah. ground handling fees are too high. Yeah. They have a flat rate for it, right? If you take, right. so look at what Singapore does. The turnaround time is too slow. Yeah. Right. So the flight needs to come in within 40 minutes, they need to go out. Otherwise, they can't handle it. Yeah. Right? So today in Sri Lanka, wide body aircraft or a narrow body aircraft, yeah. the same landing charges. Right, okay. So you have to look at models like Malaysia, Singapore, mirror them yeah. and give the flexibility that is required for these airlines to come in. Right. So, so that's where it has to actually start. So what we have is we, we have bodies like the Civil Aviation Authority, yeah. we have the Airport Aviation and we have Sri Lankan Airlines that does the ground handling, yeah. all very capable people. And then we have a tourism minister that's trying to drive tourists. Right. Then you have the issue of immigration policy, which must be also aligned. Yeah. And finally, it's your tourism offering. Right. right. So we have enough number of rooms to accommodate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. But we have to get the rest of it right to draw people in. Right. So alone, a tourism minister can't be successful. Yeah. So you have capable people in different bodies that we need to bring together. We need to bring together and push them all by asking the correct questions to accommodate. So, Civil Aviation Authority for a new airline to come in, if they give application this size, yeah, yeah, that yeah. fellow will run away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? You've got to make life easy for people. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's a case of understanding, benchmarking what the proven countries have done, yeah, have done. and following and getting everybody together. So, tourism minister on his own can't achieve a target yeah, in this. Yeah. That's true. Uh, That's immigration true. policy, the customs, you know, all of them must be friendly, front-facing, on arrival visas, six months is brilliant. Yeah, of course. You know, but those take forever to get implemented. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Case and point is, so I feel while we are going through this period right now, we need to reform all of this. Right, yeah. Why not, you know? To enable us to, you know, yeah. come out when we actually are... Could be a right time to do this. Absolutely. Because it's a bit of a lull anyway. Yeah. You, you know, know, and interestingly, we, uh, two days ago, we were talking uh, to someone about nation branding. Hmm. So, you know, uh, and he was talking about these multiple aspects to kind of brand the country. And of course, tourism aspect is completely different to that. But it, it can play, you know, well off each other, especially when your travel to the country is made so much easier and for enabling a lot more people to come. And also the thing is this, right? Right now, the dollar is at 360, 370, 380. So a lot more bang for your buck. You know, coming to Sri Lanka is a very, very viable option to have a great holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, you've nailed it on the head. It's about how we, right now, people will tell, my friends would turn around and say, I'd love to come and visit Sri Lanka, yeah. but 
I'll watch and wait till it's safe. Yeah. So I was like, it's safe now. Yeah. Right? Just come. Right. right? Uh, get on with it and come. So there's this entire interpretation that it's not safe and all of this. So we need to project outwards and give the comfort that we are safe. And I saw Minister Harin Fernando starting the program saying, yeah. you know, communicate to the rest of India that we are safe. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So I think it's, it's all these simple things like safety needs that people look at. Of course. Uh, Europe right now is super expensive. Yeah, of course. And I, I was I was on holiday after two and a half years, and I had to fly to Germany, and uh, a ticket for one hour thirty minute flight was thousand seven hundred and fifty nine euros. I almost fell off my chair. Wow! <laughs> right? And I I had to quickly double check, and I was like, what? I used to fly on Eurowings for like 10, 10, 10 euro plus taxes. <laughs> what's happened here? Yeah, right? So what's happened is there's airport handling capacity in European cities have got so difficult because they don't have the staff, mm. right? So the frequency of flights have reduced, hence for the demand, the right, price right. has shifted up. So, but it's cheaper for them to buy a ticket on Sri Lankan Airlines from London and come to Sri Lanka. Yeah, of course. It is, it, right? it, it is, is right? it is. So when you, when you equate it that way. Yeah. So, so there's a huge opportunity, especially yeah. over this winter. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a really harsh winter, apparently. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for cute head. <laughs> He's, he's one and only. He's, he's in mourning for Queen Elizabeth II. Don't, don't, don't diss the man. He's just gonna. <laughs> mourning can be spelled two ways. Yes, right? Mourning by shutting off the lights and the gas to your room. Uh, we've got questions, of course, coming up on the show for Hardy. You can also send in your questions. Of course, we're talking about uh, the connection between the um, between the gaming industry in Sri Lanka with the uh, new regulation that's been passed and the connection of how we can sort of improve the tourism in Sri Lanka, which is one thing that I think each and every one of us at the end of the day are ambassadors of the country. Absolutely. Right? We need to do our own little part in whatever we are in to make sure that our, at least our circle comes down. If everyone actually makes that effort to make their circle come down, things are just automatically going to start picking up. Uh, absolutely. And the thing is, I think the first thing is a shift in attitude yeah. towards the gaming industry rather than viewing all of these things as the devil's tools or you know alcohol cigarettes you know the thing is this kind of thing has been hammered into our heads since we were kids you know the thing is yeah. hardy i don't know right i mean i maybe this could be the reason it's there it's you see the glitz and the glamour from outside some of us have seen it from the inside some of us have seen it from the inside <laughs> some of us have been carried away from inside also right but majority of the people yeah. do not know what's going on yeah. so because of that that perception is sort of built in their head that yeah. this is taboo yeah that's or why maybe, you can't go in yeah maybe it's exacerbating the fear that yeah. they already have yeah. could that be one of the reasons no, absolutely with anything it, that's yeah. what yeah. it is right yeah. so i think people are afraid of change do of they course. think that it's it's uh, so do you, what do you do? How do you solve this problem? Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you open it up and say, and come, come yeah. in and yeah. <laughs> come and take a look? <laughs> yeah. so, so, come and take a look. <laughs> so, so I think, I think, I mean, this fear psychosis exists even when you take Port City. Yeah, right? of course. Right, where oh, they say it's a difference. Chinese colony. Yeah. Yeah. What absolute nonsense. Right. Right? Right. right. And now that people are allowed to walk in and have a look yeah. and the, the fear, the, the fear yeah. slightly changes. Yeah, yeah, right. So yeah. you're absolutely right. But how the question is, what's the solution to that? That's true. Yeah. But the thing is this, right? I mean, see, the casinos obviously are the top end of the gaming industry. Yeah. But you still have your normal folk who walk into, into a betting center yeah. are doing the same thing. The, yeah, but the thing is this, right? It is about it's about entertainment. Exactly. Ultimately, you know the exactly. thing is that's what that's what a lot of people don't understand. The thrill, I think, is equated to bungee jumping, skydiving. Some pe different people get their kicks different ways. Yeah. So yeah. you know what is the problem? Everything does not have to lead to an addiction. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. And at the same time, I'm really glad that finally there is a piece of regulation, a policy document from the government which is ultimately the you know deciding body in all of these things rather than be afraid of the population and how they are going to vote at the next election do something for the long-term benefit of the country and that's what i'm glad how is the regulation i mean in your opinion how is the regulation going to assist and help the gaming industry 
See, um, now we, I know that taxation hasn't actually still fallen into place as yet. No, the taxation is uh, is has the tax actually the taxation has been there prior to the regulation. Yeah, that's okay, right. Right, yeah. right. So at every budget, right. So there's separate inland revenue uh, section, department section, and the taxes have been yeah, been paid correct. and has been ongoing since forever. Right. Right. But you had an act in 2010 and this is the first time the regulations have come in. Yeah. Right. And in fact, now if you take Singapore, to protect the people and to protect um, the workers, all of it, the regulations, the, to control the actual standard of the play, to ensure everything is monitored, they came up with a very tight, tight regulation. Right. Which actually is required. So if you take Nevada Gaming Commission, they have the A grade of uh, uh, an act and regulation that right, is required, right. right? So what what that does is that gives everybody comfort, whether it's a bank that's going to lend money yeah. to to uh, develop an integrated resort because right. it's going to cost you billions, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or whether it's an investor that's going to invest money in, right. it's all covered by a piece of regulation that governs it and a regulatory body that has the professional acumen to handle it. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So without that, so now we have, uh, it's a great first step. Right. We Absolutely. have a piece of regulation yeah. that's yeah. there. But if we are serious about it, we need to migrate to that gold Absolutely. standard. Especially right. if you're talking about the Gaming Commission, obviously. Yeah. The Gaming Commission and yeah. the regulation that surrounds it. Yeah. yeah. That governs everything. Right. So if we, so we can't, you should never do anything half-half. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. If you commit to doing something, let's go and get the gold standard. Yeah, right. of course. That will then effectively give the country the value addition that we are looking at. Right. Right. So, if you have that, you can have... Now, take Singapore. They have two casinos. They have uh, Resorts World Sentosa yeah. and they have Marina Bay Sands. Right. And nobody else, for that duration of time, is allowed to come in. Right. Right. And the rationale and reason behind it is every stakeholder must be given a chance to make their money back or to do well. Yeah. Right. So what they did was they came up uh, with, uh, with the concessions and they said, okay, it's for you guys for these two periods. This is a regulation tightly governed. And with all of that together, they were able to produce that beautiful two resorts. Yeah. Right. And then straight after that, you found that tourism numbers made that quantum leap that we are after. Right. right? Yeah. right? But you need that whole package. Right. You can't right. just have a small piece of regulation and an act and yeah. expect and leave it open and expect, you know, so if you can come tomorrow yeah. and just get a license, yeah. why would I put a billion bucks down? Absolutely. Yeah. True. So, so there has to be, the environment has to be right. Right. And you must also then have competitive tax regime yeah. to engage. Right? So if you take even Macau, it started with a minutia 7% yeah. in terms of gross gaming revenues. Yeah. Right. But once the market builds up and the yeah. investment comes in, yeah. right. Right. Then they start to increase it upwards. Right. Absolutely. Which is the right thing to do. Which yeah. is the right. Because you've got to give everybody a chance. Yes. yes. Well, I, agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh, man, you know, the best story in, in the gaming world is uh, Sands Casino in Macau. One right. of the first to open. Their payback was 18 months. Right. Right. Wow. So <laughs> their payback was 18 months not because of anything else. It was a very ba basically build risk free thing. Mm -hmm. But the volumes that came was unprecedented. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So well, typically <laughs> in an investment, <laughs> yeah. it's six to eight years that yeah. you will look at right, recovery. Yeah. Right, 18 months. Now here, the way things are poised at the moment, I can't see with this piece of regulation, the value add okay. happening. Right? So we need to go a step further if we are to really get some serious investment to come in. How do you go? How do you take that step forward? I think we have to educate. Uh, now, there's a first step that has taken. Right. Yeah. So you we will soon find. I hope it's not going to take another ten years. Yeah, absolutely. Let's hope. Right. But they will soon find out. Yeah. People will come and say, "Look, you know, we can't actually come and invest. Yeah. Uh, simply because uh, this doesn't give us sufficient coverage. Yeah. Well, the yeah. document you have is not something commercially investable. Okay. 
right? So okay. they've then then you've got to piece the rest together, and there are experts in the subject yeah. that can do it. Yeah, of course. Right. So I think ideally, yeah. Harry wouldn't. Sorry, I know. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't. I mean, wouldn't the policy makers sit down with the casinos before they actually come up with these regulations and you know pick their brains before they send out a piece of paper? Because now they sent out a piece of paper and you from the gaming industry saying thank you very much for this piece of paper, but this is not enough. Let me just remind you that it's Sri Lanka. <laughs> yeah, <what? laughs> Sitting down on the apples. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> no, right. I think, I think look, uh, it's taken a while to get this piece of regulation. Yeah. It's a very, very positive step. Okay. Yeah. And now it's a case of uh, having the will. Yeah, okay. Um, to get on with this and to and to then move forward. So, uh, I think now is the time. Right. Uh, we are, you know, as a country, we've got our, you know, backs against the wall. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Um, yeah. And I think now that's what I keep saying. We may not have money at the moment to invest in infrastructure, yeah. but we definitely have the time and the capacity to reform absolutely. all our policies yeah. and to the get them in line. Right. Potential hasn't changed. You know. Correct. So, Right. I just I, I just going back to taxation, Hardy. Wasn't it a flat fee for the longest time? I remember it was twenty five million at point 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 thirty million, then hundred million all of a sudden. Yeah. So there's not a percentage, really. No. So there's 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 three different lines of taxation right. in it. So you have a sort of fee that is charged, That's annually, right. which is what you're referring yeah. to. Yeah. And then you have a ten percent on gross gaming, which oh, has right. gone to fifteen percent now wow. on uh, on gaming. And then there's a bottom line tax of forty percent. Right. So, <laughs> okay. actually, yeah. if you actually go and understand what gaming is, it's like a banking charge, right? Yeah. So you you have you have your table, and the house has an edge. Yeah. Right. And if the volume is not there, you can also get hit. Of course. Right. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And so that edge, you have to make sure that percentage that you're holding is sufficient to cover your expenses and your taxes. Right. Right, and you know, food is given, drink is yes. given, travel is given. Yeah. You know, there's there's rebates. So there's a whole host. The expenditure is massive. The beneficiaries really are the surrounding hotels. Yes. yes. The transport providers. Absolutely. That's right. The airline. That's right? right. The people that provide the entertainment. Right. You know, the guys who are producing the uniform. Yeah. Yeah. The trickle down effect of the whole thing yeah. is. Huge, huge, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, I think that's, I, I, uh, yeah. this, 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 this question sort of feeds into yeah, what absolutely. We're talking so, Kanti right Sirivadan asked this: How do casinos make money? Because people either play till they lose their money or make a profit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is a interesting question. How, yeah. So, so how they make money is uh, the edge that you have on the game. Yeah. Right. Right. And uh, different games have a slightly different edge. Um, and typically, the you know in mature markets with proper volume, there's about a twenty percent hold. Yeah. Right. And in markets like ours, where you have bargain hunters and no volume, yeah. right. Our hold is about seven eight percent. Right. right. So, so that's what you have yeah, as a casino to yeah. play with, because you have people who are seated around. Some win, some lose. Yeah. Correct. And there's a bit of a hold in the house, and yeah. you have to cover all your expenditure and pay your staff your salaries through that, all yeah. it, through that and your taxes. I have always uh, heard, well, learned rather, that uh, Sri Lanka, the odds are better to gamble in Sri Lanka. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a great sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, actually, yeah. uh, now if you go to a mature market and if you gamble, you don't get any um, the, the the commission rate that you get or the um, the rebates yeah. are significant. They don't exist. Okay. Right? But they are mature markets where they don't have to bargain. Yeah. Right. So they can just say this is at win if you go in there. Yeah. You put your money down and you play. Right. Yeah. right. Here for us to attract the Indian, um, yeah. we have to offer them something extra. That's right. Uh, a rolling commission or another rebate of yeah. some form. Yeah. We had to provide them with the air tickets. That's a uh, money back. Yeah. Rebate. Yeah. 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 And then we had to provide them with uh, air ticket plus hotels. You, you try Shaq, you try calling Win and say, hey, it's Shaq here. <laughs> I'm coming. You know, give me, you know, give well, me. They, they, would, they would think it's the other Shaq who's coming. <laughs> Shaq then the, then the chances are, yes, please come. <laughs> Our private jet is at the disposal. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that would be the case. But uh, no, but come to think of it, it's a very interesting thing that you actually touched on is the fact that people don't seem to understand 
that the gaming industry and the hospitality industry are very closely linked. Absolutely. Right? And uh, the airline, everything. And no, yes, exactly. I mean, especially when individuals come down to the gaming industry, it's the hospitality industry that sort of flourishes. Yeah. Which us being supposedly and wanted to be a host hospitable nation, yeah. we should have actually picked up on this long time ago. Absolutely. But the thing is, like I said, culture. Culture <clears throat> stands in the way with a big like act saying, Meva Honda Veda, Meva Naraka Veda. This is the problem. So the thing is, what you must understand is, no, there is no Honda Veda Naraka Veda. You know, you're not killing people. It's not drugs. You know what I'm saying? It's quite funny yeah. when you, I mean, it's quite funny when we actually touch on this. I mean, this is the conversation. I know you and I have been held long, yeah, for the uh, longest time. For the longest time. Yeah. But, you know, the funny thing is, the day prior to a poya, the lines that you see outside a wine store, That's what I'm saying. right? And you're talking about culture. Yeah, so what, what I'm trying to say is, everything is on the surface, right? If you truly believe in these things, then you must have a culture like that. You cannot have the highest per capita consumption of alcohol in a country that claims to say no to alcohol on poor days, right? Yeah. So, so I mean, it happens. <laughs> Think about it this way, right? Yeah. Now, another way to look at it, I look at things from a business perspective. Yeah. So you have uh, productivity yeah. and you have one holiday a month, which is a given, that you have to shut everything. Yeah. If you had a factory line like that, you're going bust. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you're going bust. Now, if you go to a casino internationally, you don't close. Yeah. Right? The doors are open 24-7. Absolutely. Right? Every day of the year. Right. right. Now, here we have to close it and then open it. You know, stop starting a machine is very costly. <laughs> yeah, right? of course. Right? So, you need that volume on the table in order for you to keep it going. So, so you have so many different issues like that yeah. which we are facing and I think that these are things that need to be looked at deep and addressed. Absolutely. And I think so the regulation, this is what it should do, you know, talk, think, think about it very to the minutia, you know, actually, but the little dot the I's and cross the T's basically. It needs to, otherwise, you can't you can't get there. Yeah. Just because we have a piece of regulation, it's not going to happen. Absolutely. So there is a, also uh, historically casinos have not been open. Well, de facto they say not open to local Sri Lankans, <laughs> but a lot of Sri Lankans are in there anyway. But what I'm trying to say is, so there was a way of appeasing the community, saying you know what, this is only for foreigners. How, how true is that statement now? No, so that, that's evolved again. So early, yeah. the early doors, it was a club license that had it. So you had to be a member. It, right. Then they said members only. Right. And then if you remember at certain times, yeah. then it became foreigners only. Correct. Yeah. Right. And, and various forms. Yeah. Right? So there's nothing restricting. Yeah. Right? So it's a case of, okay, if you want to keep your locals away, um, let's think about a potential charge that you have. Yeah. You know, something reasonable that you yeah. charge. Uh, which will keep them away. Correct. So if correct. somebody like in Singapore, there's a, there's a deterrence. So yeah. there are ways in which you can safeguard this. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, take take Vegas. It's it's had a history of how long? <laughs> yes. Right. Today, um, actually, if you look at it, the the gaming related revenue Vegas generates is only thirty percent. Right. Seventy percent of the revenue that's generated is pure entertainment. Wow. <laughs> right. right. But when it started to enable this to happen, so it will be tables, games will be the revenue generator. Right. Um, then then uh, the slot percentage that it, it delivers is yeah. less. Yeah. So as it matured, it then moved to slot being. Yeah. So this is the thing where people go and have Absolutely. fun. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Right? So everybody, university kids, everybody go to Vegas, have a good time. Yeah. And there's, there's shows to see, there's every day Absolutely. something happening at a different, you know, there's a boxing match. Yeah, of course. So, Everything is event driven, right? So this is why it's so interlinked. Take Dubai. Yeah. How how have they come back from the pandemic? Yeah. Cricket, you name it, every yeah, conference. It's incredible. Right? Every show yeah. to restart the machine, yeah. it's driven with events. Absolutely. Right? So, right. so so you need to have you know, it's a whole collective of different things that you need to do. Yeah. To make this work, yeah. it starts at the airport, true, true. <laughs> then moves to the immigration policy that you have to, right. yeah. to look at. <clears throat> then you've got to start looking at your tourism offering as yeah. such. Yeah. And th within that, you need to think, okay, what's your MICE grouping and what yeah. are your event calendar? We don't, as a country, yeah. 
We don't have an events calendar. We don't. We don't. We don't. Randomly. Other than the SLB, I think, you know. Right. So, yeah. uh, from some fixed things yeah. which are there. Yeah. Again, culturally. Yeah. yeah. True, true. Right? But we do not have an events calendar. Agreed. agreed. You know, I'll tell you something though, right? Uh, being in the media industry, I'll tell you one of the biggest problems, of course, especially organizing events in this country, is the archaic laws that exist of course. in the municipal council. I am telling you this, yeah. right? The amount of taxes that you need to pay yeah. to actually get a ticket out before even it's sold I know is, is ridiculous. <laughs> I do a lot of plays and I know this. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. and up to today, there's yeah. an old man still stamping yeah. the way it was done back of in course. 1940s. <laughs> How would you expect to move like this? <laughs> so, so that's what I mean. Yeah. So, the, so each of these areas need to be looked at. Right. And okay, get the players that are involved commercially to come and say, you know, this is what it is. Or you bring an international event manager who's doing it to say, identify the bottlenecks and tell me what I need to do. Right. And, and so these are things that actually, this is what I mean. Right now, instead of investing, which we don't have the money to, let's reform all of this. That's yeah, right. right. Let's reform all of this, yeah. which is effectively what time, mind, yeah. uh, plenty of creative minds yeah. that are around. Yeah. Yeah. And let's get busy with that for the next 18 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Agreed. Harit asked this question. Is online gambling also legal in Sri Lanka now? <laughs> Great question. Yeah, um, it is. <laughs> um, um, there's, there's no uh, big regulation yeah. as such around it, but um, it is live action that yeah. whatever that we have. Yeah. So I think uh, that gets covered within the wider scope of what we do. Absolutely. So so you can no, actually you you, uh, you can gamble online. Right. Um, Hari, with the current setup of the gaming industry, uh, can it still start feeding into the tourism uh, industry in the country? It definitely is. Right. Um, there's no question. So if you if you take Colombo, um, there's no question the Colombo hotels, the restaurants, whatever little nightlife we have, is being fed by the action uh, that the casinos bring. Right. So it is, but we've got to think of a scale in right. whatever we do. Right. right. So we have a <coughs> fantastic opportunity with uh, the Cinema and Life uh, project yeah. coming yeah. together. Right. right. Uh, without <coughs> any of this regulation, they have. Uh, or any envelope of protection, they have invested a billion. <laughs> wow! Right? And you have, you're getting a, 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 an amazing place, 800 plus rooms, conferencing yeah. facilities, 17 outlets. Um, you know, and uh, it also has space for um, uh, casinos. Yeah, casinos, yeah. yeah. I think. Uh, so Is it, it has yeah. 150,000 square feet yeah. of space for it. Yeah. Um, so which they're looking at operators to come in. Um, and I think uh, with the current regulation that we have or the act and the regulation, an outside person wouldn't have ever been able to come and invest yeah. Right. that scale. Right. right. So I think um, there's not one in Asia, so as in South Asia. Right, okay. South Asia. So Pakistan doesn't have. Yeah, doesn't yeah that's have, what I'm saying. Right? So South Asia doesn't have. One. Yeah. So I think... Uh, there's, there's real opportunity there. Absolutely. So we're, what you're saying is we're actually sitting on a gold mine and we don't realize it. Yeah, we don't realize it. Yeah. And you can develop it a bit more as well. Right. Uh, you can develop it a bit more, no That's question. Uh, but I think you need to have, uh, you need to take examples of how, not what Macau is today, yeah. how it got to that. Absolutely. And if it you doesn't think, start uh, like this, <coughs> it doesn't start like this. So yeah. You have to create the environment for it to then snowball upwards. Yeah. So how did Singapore go about it? How did the Philippines go about it? There's enough case studies for us to look at and follow. Absolutely. And the thing is, when especially when your neighbors don't have <laughs> gaming, yeah. my message to them is, in, Panela in, Lanka out in. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where, where do we actually have the highest concentration of tourists coming in to Sri Lanka to actually, you know, into the gaming industry? So, India, China. India and China. India, China, we have some Bangladesh, Nepal. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, that market has been grown over 25 years. Right, right. So, so there have been Indians coming in and out. Yeah. Quite a they are very comfortable here, by the way. You know, the funny <laughs> thing is the fact that it's in India and China, two of the most superstitious nations in the world. 
True, but you know they really, really enjoy their game. They do. <laughs> they really do. Yeah. They really do. In fact, I mean, they have like uh, accounts. They you know have left here <laughs> in in local casinos, and they come and you know kind of take the cash back the next time they're here. <laughs> so it's they're, they're they're comfortable. So Hari, now the regulation is out, right? Now you say obviously um, with 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 everyone of course involved in the gaming industry clearly want a, the, the, a bit more meat in this regulation that needs to be put in, which of course you've explained it really well as to why this actually should yeah. happen. Now once this regulation and the issuance of the gazette with the government starts spreading like wildfire, right Right now it's still very fresh, starts spreading like wildfire, <coughs> again different perceptions can start coming around and um, if unwanted little wildfires start coming up in different places, wouldn't that deter potential investors coming in? And shouldn't the gaming industry take ownership in making people understand how beneficial this is to the economy? Uh, I think um, I think yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think uh, educating uh, the public at large is, is something that uh, needs to be done, right. no question. And I think stakeholders must play a role in it. Um, but it's very difficult in this country to put uh, put wildfires down. <laughs> yeah, um, It's always driven. So this is, again, I, I feel it's a cultural thing. Um, uh, they drive it on so many different aspects. So. Typically what you get is if a businessman is doing well, he's either classified as a smuggler, a deal maker or doing something completely the out of the ordinary yeah. uh, rather than the hard work or effort they're putting. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So you never see, you know, it's rare yeah. that you clap each other's success. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. It's so important culturally as a country to do that. And I thought that, you know, the next generation is going to be different. But in fact, I'm finding out that uh, it's not, not so, not so. Yes. Right? So it's, it's, I don't know how it is in your, your spaces, but it's not so. So, so this is the difficulty. So there's people with vested interests right. that will then get involved to muddy the water. Right. And so it's, I think really government has to decide, okay, this is going to form a part of our space strategy, yeah. tourism strategy of where we want to go and we are going to lay out the best in class. Right. right? And, and thereafter it will happen. Right. Absolutely. And so all these things, um, I see a lot of these issues that we are facing are poor man's problems. Yeah, actually you're right. right? <laughs> it, it's a poor man's problem yeah. because our GDP is where we are, we are struggling, <coughs> we, are, we are bankrupt. Right. And if you are a country with the GDP, have a look and see with countries where the GDPs are above 10, 12,000. Do you see these problems? Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Suddenly the cultural view changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. So, so, so rich dad, poor dad, that's what you're referring yeah, to. So there's there's yeah. two aspects to it. There's education yeah. and exposure. Yeah. Plus there is the simple fact that uh, lack of resource. Yeah. What if, what if, what if there, I mean, if there was a possibility where the whole gaming industry per se can actually take over a location and just, you know, just for them. Right, like the port city. Like the port city, yeah. maybe. Right, okay. everything is sort of centrally located there. Go ahead and do whatever you want there. That's your area. Will that work? That will work. That will work. You, you cluster up and yeah. it work. You can designate various bits and you can see how you do that. Yeah. And actually, there's already a nice captured part. Right. So yeah. if you do the bearers around. Yeah. Right. So there was an original pan with DR Vijay Vodra. Yeah. All of that having you know entertainment areas right on the, on the waterfront right and that connects up nicely to Port City, so you can easily yeah, you, can, you can you can actually plan that out pretty well. Um, that was discussed, but then you know plans here yeah. <laughs> come and then fall at bay. And yeah, then yeah, that's, that's the true. end of it. They hardly materialize into fall at bay. Lots of people have fallen into bay yeah. <laughs> lately also. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so basically now, um, I'm, it's, it, it really is, I mean, uh, we were actually having a discussion about this and how much this can actually improve the economy, because right now we need to look at avenues where we can start infusing that foreign exchange coming in. And I suppose the gaming industry really stands right on top to exponentially increase it. Absolutely. See, um, I think a good way to sum it up, I, I had the um, fortune of meeting uh, a Kuwaiti Deputy Prime Minister who was on holiday on a right. personal visit oh, right. and he had travelled the island and 
when he got back to Colombo, uh, he asked myself and another friend to come and join him for some dinner. Yes. Um, so I went to the Shangri-La um, and uh, I said, how was your trip? And he said, in a nutshell, um, where I'm from, God, what God has given me is under the ground. We drill it out and yeah. he said, God has given everything for you to see. <laughs> wow. Right, but we don't know how to monetize it. Yeah. What a, what a statement. Right? So that sort of sums up. So we have all of this. Yeah. You know? But just because we're going to say, okay, we're going to have integrated resorts and casinos, we are not going to prosper. There is an entire connectivity about everything that you do. You have to go a little bit deeper. Mm. Right? And connect all of it together. And then suddenly you'll have a cohesive action plan. Yeah. You can't individually drive these things. Absolutely. A casino on its own is not going to... For sure. Yeah. Right? So you need, like I said, so what I've identified is you need to have uh, airport aviation Correct. minister. Remove the bottlenecks. <laughs> national imm immigration, yeah. immigration guy, tourism. Correct. So all of them work quite close together yeah. to achieve a goal and a target and to remove the bottlenecks. Yeah. Just like you said, sort out the CMC. There you yeah. go. Oh my God. Very simple. The first thing is, sort out. Mm. And I think uh, the hardy, it will actually help if you if you can collate the like the kind of numbers that you know of foreigners coming in here for the gaming, which actually directly translates into hotel stays, money spent in our markets, you know, on holiday, on travel, because that's a huge I, I don't think anybody's done that kind of research. Everybody just sees, okay, tourism numbers are coming. Nobody knows for which action they are coming. And know? why they are coming. Yeah. You know, I mean, and right now there was a, there was a period that, we'll get into that. I think we have a very long question. Shazna has sent us a very long question. Right. Meeting customers where they are has become a bit cliche. But no truer words have been stated when it comes to a great online casino marketing strategy. Over the top uh, channels such as Hulu, Amazon Prime and other online streaming services are where you'll find potential guests consuming media. These channels offer target, uh, targeting opportunities to reach wider audiences or niche groups. Are we able to tap this group to attract a wider group of people to visit Sri Lanka? Shazna, that's a fantastic yeah, what question. What a great question <laughs> then. Yeah, it's pretty long as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I, I, absolutely. Why? Why can't we? Yeah, of course. That? It's, of course. It's, uh, I mean, you have the expert groups that specifically target this. You just need to know the kind of communication that you target for which audience. I mean, and just target it. So that this is, this is so. That's where I say our tourism offering for us to go into niche targeting. We need to ensure our offering is properly organized. Yeah, it's correct. segmented in a proper way. Right. So that is quite confusing. Why would people come to Sri Lanka? They come for a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. So now, the amount of bird species we have in our country. Of course. Right? So if we target specifically for bird lovers, right, that alone will have a trail that you can really tap into. Absolutely. Right? Which can be a particular niche in one of the channels that's particularly selling something. Absolutely. Right? right? So we agree we yet that. don't have that organized level. Now, if you take surf. Right. So, yeah. take ski ski holidays that people go to, yeah. they'll spend vast sums of money to spend two weeks to a month on yeah. a ski chalet. Yeah. Right? Now, surf is exactly that. Yeah. Right? So, we have Valigama yeah. for, you know, it's literally like a natural surf. Yeah. Right. Right. Right? For beginners to learn, yeah. people come spend, you know, two, three weeks and just surf. Yeah. Right? From morning, they'll yeah. surf. I've met two uh, Australians who've yeah. been coming to Arugambe every year yeah. for 35 years. Mm -hmm. Two best friends, and they've gotten old now. <laughs> they are now in their 60s and they're still surfing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, see, the surf culture is huge, right? And it's growing so fast. So yeah. we have to tap and see what are the areas that are having this growth tra trajectory that's double digit plus. Yeah. And target into that because once you catch somebody, ski holidays when people go in Europe. Yeah. It's every year they do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And surf is very similar. So you get longer stays yeah. and regular visits. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So you need to, yeah, definitely. So the bottlenecks that you're saying, of course, is it predominantly in the state sector itself? Um, would it would look, we all we all come from the we all come from the private sector. Mm -hmm. We know how fast things can actually get done in the private sector. 
what's the problem with it getting done as fast in the state sector? No, what it is is actually uh, the fact that you have different um, segments that don't work together. Yeah. So let's say you can't get a job done. Civil Aviation Authority, for example, if you take the aviation space, you have civil aviation that will give the license for somebody to airline to fly in, right? Then and and various other regulatory matters they look at. Airport aviation control the airport itself, yeah. right? Right, and then you have Sri Lankan Airlines that will do the ground handling. Right, yeah. right. Three of these guys don't talk to each other. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> right. So their firm, so nothing wrong, but their firm with what they civil aviation is firm with their job and right. their duty. Yeah. Right. So airport aviation is firm with what they want yeah. to do, and they have a P and L to look after. Sure, sure. And then Sri Lankan airline ground handling, they've got their own thing. So, so you can't facilitate because yeah. get them all into one room. There was an initiative to do that, yeah. and drive them to come together to drive the result. Of course, right? then suddenly you will see that actually there is progress because yeah. there's no interdepartmental cohesiveness yeah. to drive out a result. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's funny because this is something the almost the same thing that we actually had, I guess, the other day talking yeah, about. Yeah, before it. yesterday. In and the, you know, it's all about national policy ultimately. Yes, you know? yes, yes. So when you have the policy in place, all you got all these different departments just need to implement it. And, and and also I mean, obviously something that he touched on maybe he can also touch on this Hardy is the fact that these policies that need to be put in place obviously have to come from a level that can actually drive it. So That's you're right. looking at possibly right at the top, of the course. president himself yeah. basically saying this needs to be done. This is how it's supposed to be done. Fall in place or move out. Yeah, <laughs> I think good example is Morocco. Right, right. right. So, I'll give you an example there. Morocco um, had an airline called Royal Air Morocco. And to protect that airline, didn't allow others to come in. Right. Okay. Right? So, it's a bit like, you know, Sri Lankan has a little <laughs> bit of that. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, to protect, protect, you don't want any com competition to come in, especially in your main driver uh, um, schedules, yeah. where you're making a thumping sum of money. Correct. Right? So, there, the king uh, of uh, Morocco had a weekend agenda where he invited all the short haul carrier CEOs, presidential invite, <laughs> right. Right, right. to all the short haul carriers CEOs to come for a weekend at the palace. Right. right? <laughs> and that is when he broke out to them that Morocco is going to have open skies policy. Right. All of you all are welcome to fly. <laughs> right? We'll give you all the facilities, no ground handling fee, etc. Yeah. That that chairman of the Royal Air Morocco almost fell off the chair. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you know, <clears throat> no chance. Right. Yeah. What happened was the number of so every European destination, whether it's Ryanair, yeah. whether it's EasyJet, yeah. all of these airlines were suddenly promoting Morocco all over Europe. Of right. course. Right, <laughs> very profitable for them too, you know. Right, and they were given the slots on yeah. a first come first serve basis. They thrived, and Royal Morocco got more efficient, more competitive, yeah. and more successful yeah. because of that. Yeah. But they were resistant to the change, yeah. and like you said, the top just said, "No, this <laughs> must happen." Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Come on, let's get on with it. Yeah. So you're yeah. absolutely right. Because the other the other example, we actually spoke to him and we asked him, "Listen, give us some success stories." of nation branding. So he was talking about Qatar, he was talking about Dubai, he was talking yeah. about Abu Dhabi. I said, those three nations that you basically mentioned, they are run with an iron fist. If the sheikh says do it, you do it. Yeah. You don't question why. <clears throat> but that's the problem here. You've got, yeah. you know, yeah. that so seems true. to be the problem. But the thing is, I think with the proper kind of education, share, that you can convince the people. You don't have to strong arm them. You can convince the people. This is a long term goal. Right. You know, I think, first of all, we need to stop thinking five year strategies. It's not about winning the next election. Yeah. It is about a 15, 25 year strategy where you actually increase GDP and you get out of this poor man mindset. And then you actually think about how we can improve on this. Right. And I, I knew you've nailed it. You know, imagine um, I moved to Sri Lanka 10 years ago with a 30-year plan. <laughs> right, that was a 30-year plan. Because you can't, can't now, now say, for example, the ups and downs that yeah. we have. Overnight, nothing to do with us. We've lost, you know, you know half the value of uh, whatever investment yeah. money we brought into the country. For sure. 
right? So, but you can't plan that uh, on a five-year plan. Absolutely. Right? You have to ebbs and flows, of and we've course. got to run yeah. through, but just focus on a 30-year yeah. plan of yeah. where you want to and be. And there's recovery there, you know. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, the, as a private business, if you're thinking that, yeah. as a country, how can we succeed with five-year plans? Of course. That's true. Right? Policy continuity is absolutely essential. Yeah. We need to highlight what is so relevant to us. Yeah. Tourism, for me, from what that Deputy Prime Minister said to me, yeah. is so visibly an area yeah. with two and a half, you know, 2.3 million, we have not even scratched the surface. Yeah. And I can see us at 10 million. Yeah, I can see us easily at 5 million right. tourists yeah. into this country if we have a cohesive plan and a continued plan. Right. right. Where we come and say, okay, this is of national importance. We're not going to touch this. Yeah, and right. we're all collectively going to work towards it. Right. So we need to, we need to see you know, 10, 15 different areas yeah. which we think and prioritize it and work towards a plan which is agreed upon and not played around. Absolutely. Yeah, right. I completely agree. You know, a good example is take palm oil. You know, palm oil grows only 6 degrees from the equator, yeah. plus or minus. Sri Lanka started palm oil right? and within a space of three years it went from yeah let's 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 plant yeah to no more planting to removing yeah. what is planted wow yeah so right. how on earth can an investor get confidence to do something right in a space of the such short yeah. period yeah. Yeah. that happens so where is the policy continuity and the problem here also is, of course, the fact that a government starts something, automatically the, the next government that comes in just completely wipes it out, yeah. restarts it again. Yeah. And this is, the, this, is the, this is the plan that we've been going through all along. Yeah, Shaq, I see the biggest problem as the party system. Because people get divided on parties. You can see even your friends when you know, some fecal matter hits the <laughs> spinning device upstairs, yeah. <laughs> then people get divided. Yeah. You see how racist people are when suddenly when the, you know, the enemy is at the gates. Right. You know, so the thing is, education is what's needed. And actually vote for policy and people rather than on mass a, a party. Yeah. You know? yeah. And yeah. because then it, it doesn't become about he did or I did. Right. It's about we did. Yeah, yeah. You know, so this is a, this is the long term strategy. Yeah? It's, it's really a hard thing, Anu, to achieve. I, of course, I know, it's, I it's the dream. Yeah, but it's hard now. that's a utopian ideal, right. you know. I mean, I mean, Maldives, good one, where they fight in their politics, yeah. but yeah. they don't touch tourism. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, makes, now, makes sense. Now, now look at tourism, how it's rebounded in the Maldives. <coughs> Without true. one Chinese going in there. <laughs> they are back to what they used to be. Right? Or even and, better. Right? And, and, and they had Balana Airport expansion. That yeah. Now. So most of these countries, whether it's Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, identified from Philippines, yeah. the quantum leap also comes in from airport expansion. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, because, you know, so if we have the same airport, okay, and we get 2.3 million tourists, right, and we have an integrated casino, do you think uh, the economy is going to do significantly better than what it did before? No. Yeah. Because you, you, you have a bottleneck that you can't overcome. Yeah. Maybe you can utilize Matala and Ratmalana a bit, but those are all slight adjustments. Yeah. So you need that airport expansion right. to happen. Yeah. Right. And now, now, now I feel there's huge pressure on Colombo City Hotels. Yeah. The amount of room inventory coming on stream, right, is quite a lot. It's about three and a half thousand to four thousand rooms that are coming on stream soon. Right. So if we don't have tourists coming in, yeah, what yeah, are you going to do? All yeah, these hotels won't be able to sustain themselves. So we really need to have a focus strategy, yeah. and we need all these different departments to work together to achieve that goal. And really? what's key is get them involved from an early stage rather than imposing it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, you guys think about what you need. Of course, stakeholders rather that? than... Yeah, get get them the, all involved in the process, yeah. the buy-in is there, yeah. and then you can actually get it done. I think, I think that the only problem is the fact that, you know, we should just also get away from this, what am I getting out of this sort of attitude? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, look, <laughs> it's, it, there's, I mean, there's, you know it's there. Of right? course there's, it's there's there. no, there's, yeah. I mean, it'll be a shame if we don't mention it before we end the show. Yeah, true. I think that's one of the biggest problems yeah, that we have. 
Like you said, Hari, you come up with the idea. You basically, you know, come up with the uh, solutions. But the problem is, what am I going to get out of this idea? Is is unfortunately. Yeah, I think what we, what we should be thinking is, what are we going to get? You out know, of look, it? our generation is done. <laughs> you have to accept that. You have to admit that. Now start is, plan for your kids and yeah, your but grandkids. Saying, the problem is the decision makers are all our generation. This, yeah. is, the, this is the problem. <laughs> wow, we're almost done with the show. <laughs> our just done. All we don't have to get back to the poll. Let's get back to the poll before we're done uh, on the show. Spoke so much about tourism, spoke so much about the gaming industry and how closely connected they are Absolutely. and how one needs to sort of flourish to make sure that everything else flourishes yeah. around it. So, so just uh, before we uh, get back into the responses to the poll, uh, we'll entertain you with this little message from our sponsor. Welcome to the universe of the Raz, where you explore and discover whatever you want, whatever you need. All you can imagine is on your feet. When miles are abridged, happiness is unlocked. Discover your Dara. So this was today's poll question. Uh, it was very simple, but very important. Does Sri Lanka have the potential to attract the real high rollers? Yes or no answers only. WhatsApp your answers to our hotline number 077-669-1590. Before we get into the response, Hari, what do you think? Uh, I think um, uh, we have. Yeah. We have all the attributes that surround it. Uh, but I think uh, we need to up our infrastructure, really. Absolutely. Uh, we need a couple of its skeletons here, no? <laughs> we, we, we need a bit of that, yeah. but we also need, you know, I, I keep going on about airlines. We need first-class seats. Yeah. And Agreed. we need uh, the ability to handle private jets. Yeah. Uh, so, this is the response that we got. Uh, this was, this is on, <laughs> this is as we have the responses. Well, uh, so you see what I mean. Forty-one percent say Sri Lanka has the potential to attract the real high rollers. So the general belief, fifty-nine percent, therefore think that we don't. Yeah, I think that's a perception that is being created right now. I Absolutely. mean, I suppose perception sort of also relies on the economy that it is in at the moment, mm. and also the fact that a lot of Sri Lankans haven't seen the inside of a casino, or like a you know A grade casino. Yeah, some of them obviously think that they're allowed in. Like I mean, we spoke about that true, also. True, true. They're, they're, they're allowed. It's it's taboo. Uh, it's 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 not taboo, but it's like you're just not allowed. So Multiple I, barriers. So you know, I think that's something that hard you can address in the future, maybe. Yeah, but he just said, what do, what, what do I do? We'll do a show around. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do an open day. Why not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we'll actually come and do the show from in, inside uh, Bellagio, for instance. It's a good idea. Yeah. Well, it's a great idea. <laughs> Speak to a TV partner on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Bring right. bus loads along the way to Lotus Tower. Yeah. Oh, that's another great idea there. True, true. Uh, done with the show, ladies and gentlemen. Hari, thank you so much for coming no, no, on the show. Such a pleasure. Absolute thank pleasure. Thank you so much, Hari. And, such uh, a good chat. Too. It was such a great chat, obviously, talking about the connection between the gaming industry and tourism, which, of course, we all need to sort of look into. Uh, it's our Friday. <laughs> yes, Is because that? we don't have a show tomorrow. We don't have so. a show tomorrow. <laughs> it's our Friday, and uh, we'll be back uh, with which 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 show is this for this Darren? Which show is this? Fifty fourth. 55, sorry. 55th show. Yeah, there we are. On a trot. And uh, on Monday, we do have Booker Prize uh, shortlisted author Shehan Karnatilaka joining us for a good old chat. All that and more, plus so many other great guests coming up right throughout the week. Have yourself a great weekend, ladies and gentlemen. We shall speak to you once again Monday night, 9.30, live on Channel 1. Hadi, thanks again. Pleasure. Pleasure. See you on Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.